uh, let her go, yeah, let her go, whoa, let her go, yeah, she a Hey guys, so I've seen a lot of what to do in quarantine videos, but I have not seen any what productive things you can do in a quarantine. So I am here today to give you 10 productive things to do in quarantine. The first productive thing to do in quarantine is draw. I personally haven't drawn in quarantine yet, but out of quarantine, I am a drawer. I do draw. Here is one of my journals. Here are my drawings. I'm not going to showcase them all, but I do draw. And if you haven't drawn before, it's something that you can do in quarantine because it's really therapeutic and kind of satisfying. I haven't finished this journal yet, but I've done a lot of drawings in it. I also bought myself a scrapbook. It's really pretty. And I'm gonna start filling this out as the days go by. I've only got like a few drawings, but yeah. Here are some of my drawings. This was a failed drawing. <laughs> this is my only good drawing, but yeah. I have a scrapbook and I'm planning to fill that scrapbook out in quarantine. It's really good to draw because it's good for your mental health and it's just really nice. It's kind of satisfying. So yeah, that is the first thing. The second productive thing you can do in quarantine is cook. I cook a lot. My friends know I cook a lot. I cook a lot. I love to cook. So I feel like cooking is a life skill and quite a few people actually don't know how to cook. So right now is the perfect time to learn. There's so many YouTube videos you can watch. I'm gonna start doing YouTube videos on cooking myself. So I'm just saying, watch those when they come up. But yeah, cooking is good also because if you cook yourself instead of getting stupid ready meals then you're actually more mindful of what you eat and you're more likely to become healthy and especially now in these times it's really important to have a good immune system and the main thing to do is eat good live good you know what i mean <laughs> the third productive thing i say we can do in quarantine is read i have so many books that i have not touched yet which I'm actually kind of happy about because I'd rather be stuck here with books to read than books to, that I have already read in quarantine because now we can't go out and buy any because the stores are closed. But I'm gonna show you guys a few of my books. Okay, so I have multiple genres. This book I'm borrowing from my friend Kaya. I don't know if she's watching this, but I don't think she is. But After, this is the After series. After is a love series, good series. You guys have probably watched the movie, which is on Netflix. So yeah, I recommend the books because the books are much better. But this is about a society where women cannot speak. Actually, they can speak, but they're limited to just 100 words a day. And if they speak over the limit of words, then a thousand volts of electricity will course through their veins. It's kind of like crazy, to be honest, but I haven't started reading it yet. It's called Vox and it is by Christina Dolce. Then we have The Picture of Dorian Gray. I cannot wait to read this. I've been saving it, but this is a classic. I'm scared of reading classics because they're like really, really proper English to the point where it could be boring. Yeah, I'm not going to waffle on about books. So if you want me to do a book video, just actually comment down below and tell me if you want to do if you want me to do a book video because then I will. So, number 4, do a home workout. We are stuck inside. We are all going to get fat, especially with the amount of food we're going to consume. Yeah, I'm already getting fat. It's really important to do home workouts or go outside and just get in exercise because we need to keep healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I personally am currently doing a 30 day challenge. This is from TikTok. 
and I'm actually making a YouTube video of me trying this 30 day challenge and seeing what happens to my body. I don't think anything's gonna happen, I'm gonna be so sad. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun anyway. I mean, at least I know inside my body's gonna be good, but outside it's not. Number five, do yoga. I have done yoga. It is actually really good because there's like loads of stereotypes about yoga, but I think it's really good at just becoming calm and it gives you time to actually reflect on your day and on what you've done and everything. I just love yoga now. I don't do it every day, to be honest, but I'm trying to do it at least once a week. Like for me personally, that's a lot. <laughs> so yeah, do yoga, it's productive. Number six, set personal goals. I have set myself a few goals. I'm not going to tell everyone what my goals are, but one of those goals is like a childish goal. Yeah, it's a childish, childish goal, but we're allowed any goals we want. I mean, nobody's gonna stop us. Nobody, <laughs> nobody is gonna stop us. So the goal that is childish that I have is that, okay, so I can do the splits. But I can do the splits with my right leg going forward and my left leg going backwards. But I can't do the splits the other way around. <laughs> and I've known how to do how, how to do the splits like that way since I was like a kid. Yeah, whatever. I'm still a kid, but I mean a kid kid. Yeah. But I am so annoyed that I didn't learn it both ways. And I don't know, it's just really annoyed me even more. So I want to know how to do the splits both ways. And then potentially even this way but i don't know i just want to know how to do the splits with my left leg facing forward it's really weird to explain but it makes sense it makes sense but that is one of my goals i don't know if, if i'm even gonna get my goal by the end of quarantine but i'm like doing stretches i haven't actually attempted it because i haven't really tried to do it also um not just goals just planning out what you're gonna do after quarantine is over because you have a lot of time and usually in life everything's so hectic everything's so organized it's almost like we have no free time to actually just sit and contemplate on the future you know what i mean so now it's kind of nice because we can plan and plan and plan in detail so that we can get to our goals yeah that sounded really motivational i'm proud of myself <laughs> number seven clean your room clean your dusty makeup brushes so i'm that person with the with the, <laughs> with the dusty makeup brushes so i my mom <laughs> my mom knows that i don't really clean my room that often but i actually did clean my room i just I don't know it just came out of nowhere i just wanted to clean my room it's to do with quarantine i think it's just it just got to me i was organizing everything i just did a deep spring clean and it felt so good organized everything all my makeup everything washed my brushes the next day and did my bed it was just beautiful it feels beautiful I, i'm telling you guys you have to do it it's so productive and it just declutters your mentality and your life so clean your room <laughs> and your brushes number eight film a youtube video obviously i'm doing this right now you're watching a youtube video but i feel like most people actually watch more youtube videos and film them including youtubers themselves well that's me but you don't even have to be a YouTuber to film a YouTube video. It's like filming or vlogging is the modern day version of having a diary entry. Kind, It's kind of like that, in my opinion. So I think it is productive to film daily vlogs. Like I started doing YouTube when I was literally like 11, 10, 9. <laughs> but I just enjoyed filming myself and like telling random people about my life. Because it just seemed like such an, a fun thing to do. But obviously now it's blossomed into something even better. More productive. But if you're shy, 
don't want anyone to see it. You can just do your own personal YouTube videos because you can still upload videos to YouTube, have a YouTube channel, but have the videos unlisted. So that means only people with the link can view it or you can just have it private. But it's your own choice. You can decide to have a proper YouTube channel now. Like this might be your YouTube awakening and you might realize, you know what, I need to start YouTube because this is for me. You know what I mean? So, film a couple YouTube videos, that's really productive. Number nine, try new hairstyles. I am per I'm a person who does a lot of different hairstyles, but they're not that extravagant. I mean, they're just normal, low bun, ponytail, edges. I mean, I do a lot of edges tutorials, but they're not that hard, it's not that complicated. Here and there, I'll do a few braids, but I decided that I'm going to do a YouTube series of me trying new hairstyles and you guys better watch because this is going to be fun. I'm excited so you guys should be excited. Try new hairstyles for yourself. Some people do not do any hairstyles and stick with the same hairstyle. That was literally me in primary school. I would have this one ponytail every single day but once I started doing different hairstyles it was like my life changed and it's just it's really fun nice it's a form of self-care so just do it do it do it do it do it do it because you will have no time like this ever again in your life just think about it think about it okay number 10 self-educate there are a lot of different people watching this video whether you're younger than me older than me or the same age as me but as you know i'm in year 11 going off to year 12 and i'm starting a new education path i'm starting my a levels and i decided that i wanted to kind of slowly start studying my a levels at home but not like not too much but actually just seeing what the content is and stuff like that okay so one of the a levels that i am going to do is politics i have never done politics at gcse so i decided that i will use the internet to my advantage and form my own politics books because i have a lot of different empty books or basically empty books because my GCSEs were cancelled. I decided to rip out all of my work, throw it in the bin and have brand new books. So that's what I did. Always make a splash. Okay, but I printed out my specification on here and glued it onto the inside of this page. These are just some personal notes I made. They're kind of irrelevant. But yeah, and then on this side, I just wrote political studies A-level because on the outside of this, I can't write politics. So I decided to do it on the inside. But yeah, this is what the two first pages of it look like. And I use Seneca, S-E-N-E-C-A, Seneca, for my politics revision because it literally has the whole specification. So I looked on my school website, or my future school website, clicked on politics and found out what exam board they do. And then I went to the exam board's website, typed in politics, then found their specification and read it, printed out the part that I need that was for the exam. You can get your whole specification at a glance online from any exam board. So I just say, you do that. And then also, so I use Seneca to actually learn the content. I didn't do much so far because I'm kind of scared of starting on my own, but I just wanted to see what starting politics would be like. And it's quite interesting, but I have only done this a few times and I took a break now because my head is hurting and I, I just kind of want to escape from education at the moment. But obviously, you can also do online school if you are my age or a bit older or a bit younger. You probably do have online school that you do need to do. So that is one way that you kind of have to do self-education. But if you want to be like me, do your research and find out where you can actually learn the content for the A-levels. Some people I know are literally trying to learn the whole A-level right now so that when they get back to school, <laughs> they will have completed the whole course and would just be redoing it. I mean, that's kind of smart, but I personally don't want to spend my free time doing A-levels when I'm going to end up doing it again. I don't know. 
but it is nice to go through it and I also am going to be doing um, English and Math A level. Math A level, I think for Math A level I might actually start that from home because it is a subject that is kind of difficult and I feel like I would just get the upper hand by starting it now so that I won't completely understand it but I would have done it before so it would be easier to relearn it once I get back. Then with English I'm not going to do anything except look up the books that could potentially be the books I study so that I can read them but I am not going to analyse any of the books, any of them. That is what I'm planning to do for A levels and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and bye <laughs>